Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Tonight, today, tonight, it is night, 6.30, I will be answering your questions. Um, if you remember last week, I did my 2,500 subscriber giveaway and Q&A and I asked for your questions and boy did I get them. Pages and pages and pages worth. So we're gonna try to keep my answers really short so I can get through all of them in one video without having to do two separate videos. So without further ado, let's get started. The first question is from Vicki Sander. What is your most favorite WW recipe that you make every week? Hands down, two ingredient dough bagels or something with two ingredient dough, usually bagels. I love them. I eat them for breakfast as a breakfast sandwich. I eat them, you know, I make um, over light eggs and dip them in the middle. We call them dippy eggs. I use them for lunch. I love egg salad or tuna salad on them. So that would definitely be my favorite WW recipe that I make every week, two ingredient dough bagels. Marilyn Schaefer wants to know which YouTube channels I follow. A lot. I subscribe, I think, to about 54 different YouTube channels. Um, my Weight Watcher ones that I watch, I'll, I'll give you my top five that I watch, I don't, well, maybe top seven, that I don't miss. Um, Dish with D, Planning Us Healthy, Let's Get Fit with Sandy, Laney's Life, Weight Watchers with Carrie, Jess's Journey to Health. Oh my gosh, see, I why I didn't want to name them because I knew I was going to leave somebody out. But they're the ones I never, ever miss. I subscribe to a whole lot more and I do watch them. I just might not watch them the minute they upload, which I watch everybody else pretty much, I mean, within reason, when they upload. But I watch a whole bunch. Um, Amanda Lewis, um, N is for Nurse, Bee's Journey, a ton of them but the the ones that I mentioned first are the ones I definitely um, watch you know all the time Cindy McDonald wants to know this is like a three-part question is this your first time on WW no I did Weight Watchers before I had my first son and he will be 20 in September um, I got within three pounds of goal and I got pregnant. So I never made goal, I never made lifetime. After he was born and after, I guess, probably about six, eight months after he was born, I went back and got within six pounds of goal and got pregnant. <laughs> so never made goal, never made lifetime. Then unfortunately, I didn't go back after my second son was born. And that was a big mistake because I just kept putting on the pounds and putting on the pounds. Um, so this is like the third time that I have done WW. And I will say that as I was getting closer and closer and closer to goal, my husband was getting nervous because we saw what happened the last two times. But I'm 50 years old, so that wasn't gonna happen. But um, yeah, that was our big running joke, like don't get close to goal. Um, her next part of her question was, did you become one of those people who take your earrings and wedding rings off to weigh in? I wasn't that bad. I do consistently wear the same clothes or type of clothes every week to weigh in. And I do try to keep, I mean, I go on a Tuesday night. Um, so I always, if, if I can't make my Tuesday night meeting, I try to make another night just so it stays consistent. But I... I don't take my earrings or my wedding ring off or anything. Um, I don't wear like my Pandora bracelet because that weighs a ton. But no, I don't go that far. Um, Kathy P wants to know my starting weight, my goal weight, and my current weight. My starting weight was 198.2. In my head, I had no idea I was that close to 200 pounds. So that was a little bit of a sticker shock. Uh, my Weight Watchers goal was 146, and my current weight is 134.4. Susan Haywood wants to know, what struggles did I have at the beginning of my journey? Um, hmm. The beginning was actually easier than, than the end, I think, for me. Um, I was so focused and so on. I guess the biggest struggle was 
trying to keep things normal. I wanted to start out in the very beginning having that mindset that this is for life. This is not temporary. This is not a diet. What I do to lose the weight, I have to do to maintain it. So I need to do it from the beginning. So just trying to figure out how to fit in going out to dinner, how to navigate parties, um, you know, how to go out to, ice, to have ice cream with my family. I mean, you know, that's stuff we like to do together. So figuring those things out, I believe in the beginning was a little bit tough and, and it took some navigation. Yvonne Thompson Luz, I think I said that right, wants to know how tall I am. I am five foot four inches tall. Connie Brown wants to know, how did you and your husband meet and is he also on Weight Watchers? We met in high school. I was a freshman and he was a sophomore and we had gym class together and we played badminton together. Um, we started dating the end of my sophomore year and the end of his junior year. So I was 15 years old um, when we started dating and we've been married 29 years and I can't imagine being with anybody else. Um, he loosely follows Weight Watchers, very loosely. Um, he's the one that actually started this whole thing last January. He went to the doctors, got on the scale, and he was like 180 pounds, and he was not happy about that. And you know, he came home and he said, that's it, I'm cutting back, I'm doing this, I'm exercising. And he just did it, because that's the kind of person he is. And he is currently 157. He is five foot, well, he used to be 5'11 and a half, but now he's like 5'10 because he's shrunk. Um, so he, he's pretty thin, uh, but he always was thin. When we started dating, he was like a 28 waist, like crazy. Um, and I think he went up as high as like a 36 maybe. Um, and now he's back down to a 30. So he, he really watches. He doesn't necessarily count points or anything like that, but he really watches his portion control. He exercises five days a week. Um, he's not a big sweet eater anyway, so that's a huge help for him. So he loosely follows a healthy eating lifestyle, is a good way to say it. Christine Lampson wants to know, you mentioned that you work from home, what do you do? I can't really say what I do for a living. Um, what I can say is I am an independent contractor and for the safety and privacy of the people involved, I really can't say what I, there are children involved in what I do and for their privacy and safety, I really can't say exactly what I do, but I do work from home and I'm an independent contractor. I was in the dental field for 30 years. That's what I went to college for. Um, love teeth <laughs> but my how long ago four five years ago the dentist that i worked for for 22 years was retiring and i felt like i was too old to break in a new dentist so i decided to retire along with him and then start at my second career so that's what i do i am an independent contractor and it has to do with children i just can't reveal exactly what it is P. Johnson 32 would like to know what kind of exercise do you do and how many minutes or hours during the day? I have a pretty straightforward exercise routine. Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. I run usually three miles. I try to hit four miles at least once a week. Once in a while, if I have time on a Saturday, I'll do five miles. Um, and then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do uh, HIIT training, high intensity interval training. I do everything right at home. I either run in the neighborhood or run on my treadmill. And I use um, an app called 8, the number 8, FIT, F-I-T. It's a free app. And that's what I do my HIIT training with. Or I'll look up some HIIT training videos on YouTube. But generally the 8 FIT is what I do. I really like those. They're short. They're, they have different kinds. Um, so I'll do like two or three at a time. And I also do hand weights for my arms because I do have some extra skin um, and I'm trying to tone up a little bit. So I do hand weights pretty much every day. Um, I have a couple routines that I found on YouTube that I really like. And if I remember, I will link them below. Um, 
Sundays is usually my day of rest. Now on Sundays when we don't have something to do, we love to hike. We love to hike as a family. Sometimes with the boys working now, they don't get to go with us um, working for the summer, but we do love to go hiking, my husband and I, well, all of us, but so if we have a free Sunday, we'll do that. So I guess I do exercise on Sunday when we do that, but Sunday is generally my day of rest. I don't have any planned exercise. Okay. Deborah Field wants to know, do you use your weeklies or rollovers? When she puts her app to maintain, she gains. Um, I don't use weeklies very much. Um, I'm 50 years old, I'm perimenopausal, and I have thyroid disease. So my metabolism isn't the best, and I've learned that anywhere between 18 and 21 points is my sweet spot to lose. I can go up to 23 points to maintain pretty well. Once in a while, I'll use a few weeklies here and there, but honestly, I kind of don't need them. Um, I'm a good planner when it comes to like parties and stuff like that. So mostly I don't use them, but I will roll over a few and know that I do have a cushion in case, you know, we are going somewhere or doing something that I need a few extra points for. Kim Bedgood wants to know, I was wondering what your why was when you began your journey. Well, I had a few. One of my big ones was I had a little minor health scare. To me, it wasn't minor. To me, it was major. Um, it was with my blood pressure. I truly thought I was having a heart attack or stroke. Um, it was scary. And my blood pressure was not crazy high, but high enough that I could actually feel it. Um, and that really scared the pants off me. <laughs> and I, I knew I had to do something. And that was my biggest why. And also just because it was, I'll never forget, it was January of last year and it was my son's senior night for swim. And I had on his, I had on a white t-shirt and I had on his uh, quarter zip swim team, um, you know, like quarter zip thing. It was huge on me because my son's shoulders are like out to here. He's, he's a huge linebacker kind of guy. So it was even though I was 198 pounds, it was big on me. Well, we went to take pictures down on the pool deck and he forgot to bring a swim shirt. He had on a track shirt. Well, it's senior swim night. So I pulled off his quarter zip to give it to him to wear and I had on a white t-shirt. When I saw those pictures, I wanted to cry. I look like a linebacker. And if I remember, I will insert that picture at the end of this video, the one that is what pushed me over the edge and I knew I had to do something. So that picture was one of my whys, just the way I look. And I know that might sound conceited to some people. It might sound vain, but I wasn't happy in my own skin. I didn't like the way I looked and I, I felt, um, I don't want to say bad about myself because I love myself. I, I love myself. I just wasn't happy with the way I looked. Um, but mostly the main reason was the little medical scare because I knew that I was lucky that it was really nothing and it could have been a whole lot worse. Um, let's see, Cam Jam wants to know, can I share the apps I use for fitness and do I listen to anything while I run? Um, like I said, the apps I use are 8Fit and I will link below the arm workouts I do. And do I listen to anything while I run? Well, if I run outside, I listen to 80s music on Spotify because that's what I love to listen to. I love my, I'm an 80s girl. I love my 80s music. And if I'm running inside on the treadmill, my husband built me a little shelf across the treadmill and I put my iPad up there and I watch all my YouTubers while I run. So that really kind of keep, they keep me company and you know, the miles go by pretty quickly. Stacy Adams wants to know, when you started working out, did you notice a lot of fluctuation or did the weight melt off? I actually started working out the same week I started WW. Um, I started using Couch to 5K app. So I pretty everything pretty much stayed the same for me. I, I lost my weight very quickly and I lost it very consistently. I don't know how, I don't know why. I was very good about the program. Um, I think in my seven and a half month journey, I only had three gains and they were all under two pounds. 
So I was very, very fortunate that I lost the weight quickly and um, relatively, you know, consistently. So I, I'm, I, that was a hard one to answer, Stacy, because I'm not sure since I did start it right when I started WW. Dorina Smith wants to know, I know you get up really early to exercise. What time do you go to bed? Yes, I do get up early. I get up at 4.30 every morning. Um, I come down and I'm usually exercising by 4.45. Um, so it is an early morning for me. So I do go to bed early. I am usually in bed and asleep no later than 10, 10, 15. Not always, because sometimes I'm uploading a video and things won't cooperate, or sometimes I'm busy texting with Denise over at Dish With D. Um, you know, sometimes my family's sitting around playing a game of cards and we just stay up a little too late. So I do try to be in bed and asleep by 10, 10, 15. Rebecca Tatum wants to know how did I start running in order to build up to where I am some to where I am sometimes she feels as if she is chasing her tail I, my writing was I was doing this very late at night one night um, Rebecca I started with the couch to 5k app c25k it's basically an app where you run, walk, run, walk, run, walk, and it builds up every week. It's different. I believe you're supposed to do it like three days a week. I did it, I think more than that. Um, but that is how I build up to just running. I cannot run fast. Um, I'm at about a, like a 950, 10 minute mile. I don't run fast. I can run far. Like I can run and run and run. I just can't run fast. Like I think my best mile ever was like a 9.15, somewhere around there. So I don't run fast, but I do, I do have the endurance now and I really attribute it to the Couch to 5K app. Now I had to do, um, I think it was week six. It might've been week five or six. I had to do it like two or three times in a row because I just couldn't get over that hump. So if, if you do do C25K, don't push yourself. Don't worry about having to repeat a week. You are lapping everybody that's still sitting on the couch and you are doing a great job. So don't ever worry about being slow. Don't ever worry about, you know, having to repeat a week or anything like that. You just, you're up there, you're moving and you're doing great. Just, you have to remember that. Okay. Judy. Stockhausen wants to know how long did it take you to lose your weight and what is your best tip? I started on February 18th, 2018. I'm sorry, February 13th, 2018. I made the Weight Watchers goal at on 9-11-18 and I made my personal goal sometime at the end of October. Um, my personal goal, like I said, I was 198. My WW goal was 146, which was the highest for my range. And that's what I chose. My personal goal was 136. And it took me, like I said, about, what's that, seven and a half months to do it. And I've been maintaining since. My best tip, and you have heard me say this a hundred times on here, and I will say it until my last breath. Whatever you do to lose the weight, you are going to have to do forever to maintain that loss. So learn early how to fit in the food you love. Love what you eat and eat what you love because that's what it's all about. I, I love ice cream. I love good ice cream. And you know, four miles from my house, we have an ice cream parlor. You've heard me talk about it. It's all homemade and it's all small batch and it is phenomenal. And you know what? Once a month I go down there and I enjoy every little bite. Yes, I have to count it as 12 to 15 points for an extra small. But that's okay because you know what? We have a list of 200 zero point foods and I can have eggs and Canadian bacon for breakfast for one point and I can have a salad for lunch with some chicken on it for the cost of the dressing and I make homemade dressings so they're always just one or two points. I can have a piece of barbecue chicken for dinner with a bunch of veggies and guess what? I have a lot of points left for that extra small and 
sometimes even a small <laughs> ice cream. Actually, the last time I got a small, believe it or not, it was so rich and, and filling. I could, I could hardly finish it. I felt disgusting. I did finish it like a fool. And I felt disgusting when I got done. It was, that's, the portions are huge down there. So extra small is always good. And they have these tiny little cones that are this big. They're like this big. And it's about two tablespoons of ice cream. So if there's three different flavors I want, I'll get three of those <laughs> and, uh, and eat that. So that's my tip. Eat what you love, love what you eat. Learn early how to fit it in because this is for life. Because if you, if you eat, you know, zucchini noodles and Halo Top and I can't even think what else, all the time and, and you know, you figure, okay, I'll do it until I lose the weight. And then, you know, oh, I'm at goal. Well, you know, I'm going to start eating that Turkey Hill ice cream again and I'm going to start eating this again. You're going to gain it back. Learn early how to fit it in. Christy from Planning Us Healthy wants to know how long I was following WW before you felt that I got this and the plan became a natural part of your day. I still don't feel like I've got it. I still, I don't want to say I struggle. Some days I do. Some days I struggle. Other days are just, are, are so easy. Um, I felt I felt like probably when I when I lost the 50 pounds. My original goal when I started was 50 by 50. I wanted to lose 50 pounds by my 50th birthday, which would have been September 9th. I lost the 50 pounds sometimes sometime at the end of August. And that's when I felt, you know what? I can do this and I got this. And now it's just second nature. Like I eat something it's in the app. I you know, I look at a menu and I go right to the fish and seafood section, which I'm, I'm thrilled. I love fish and seafood. So, you know, it's, it's easy for me to go out to eat. Um, you know, I automatically pick the unsweetened iced tea and, and things like that. So I guess, I guess I felt I had it when I lost my first 50 pounds and, and it definitely does feel like a regular routine. Now I feel like I can do this for life and, and I'm a planner, so I don't mind planning things out. You know, when I planned out my menu for this week, I planned to have ice cream tomorrow night. <laughs> so I am a planner. Um, Diane Mullick wants to know, what is your most favorite breakfast meal? Well, breakfast is my favorite meal. I love breakfast and I love eggs and I love eggs every way you give them to me. I like them on a breakfast sandwich. I like them over light on top of a hash waffle. That's been my new obsession, making a hash waffle and putting uh, over light eggs on it and cutting it all up so the yolk oozes all over the hash waffle with some bacon on the side. I think that has to be my favorite. I do love the French toast in a mug and the stuffed French toast, but I think my favorite meal would have to be over easy eggs and potatoes and bacon. Yeah, that's my favorite breakfast meal. My girl Dish with D wants to know if I could change something about the WW plan, what would it be and why? I love the zero point foods, but I think they're a hang up for a lot of people. I think some people, not everybody, but I think some people can abuse them and, and not through any fault of their own because Weight Watchers kind of gives you carte blanche to do with you what you want with the zero point foods. I think there should be a limit to them. I think they should say, you know what, you can have three zero point foods a day or four zero point foods a day. Because I think sometimes we tend to overeat the zero point foods and zero points doesn't mean zero calories. And I think a lot of people get frustrated and start hating on freestyle. Um, so I think that's what I would definitely change. And I would also change the support for lifetime members. I almost feel like once you hit lifetime, I don't want to say they cut you off because they don't, but I don't feel a whole lot of support for lifetime members. I have called and suggested like lifetime meetings. Now I go to a franchise. I go to WW of Philadelphia. So international, I believe does have lifetime meetings in some locations, but WW of Philadelphia does not. And I've called and suggested it a couple times. I love my regular meeting. I love the ladies there, whether they are starting out in week one or if they're lifetime two, but I think it would be very helpful to have just once a month or even every other month, just a meeting of lifetime people who are at goal, just to talk about the stuff that other people just don't understand. So I think that's what I would change. 
D. Warren wants to know how many dogs do I have and what are their names? I have two dogs. I have Chloe, she's a Yorkie Chihuahua mix. And I have Aria, who we rescued. She is a Cavachon, which is a Cavalier Spaniel and Bichon Freeze mix. And we also have one cat named Smalls who thinks he's a dog. And we have a fish. We have Sam the fish. Forgot about him. He lives up in my son's room. Lori Carab. Oh, I'm sorry, Lori. Carabotsagalu. Oh, God, I know I butchered that. Do you ever have to cook separate meals for your family members? No. Um, everyone in my family loves food. They love to eat and they are foodies. Um, actually, my kids are better than I am. Like, my kids don't think twice about going to a restaurant and saying, oh, I've never had pheasant before. I think I'll order it. It's on the menu. Or, oh, I've never had duck before. It's on the menu. I'm going to try it. I wouldn't do that. I mean, I eat pretty much everything, but I don't like gamey stuff. But my family pretty much eats whatever I put in front of them. I know what they don't like. I have one son that likes cabbage and one son that doesn't. Um, so if we're having cabbage, I might make a separate veg for the other one. Um, trying to think if there's anything, there's really nothing that, that they don't eat. So I do not cook separate meals. And I started that when they were little, when they were babies, I never bought into that whole kid food thing where, you know, chicken nuggets and hot dogs, whatever we had for dinner, they ate, like they were eating fish, you know, at a year old and shrimp and everything else at a year old. Um, it was just second nature to them to eat what mom and dad were eating. Um, it, sometime it caused us problems because we would go out to eat and what does a kid menu have on it? burgers, hot dogs, spaghetti, and chicken nuggets. And they'd be like, well, I want a crab cake or I, I want fish. So restaurants were so accommodating most of the time when I said, you know, can we like make a kid's meal out of a crab cake? Like, in, you know, instead of two crab cakes, one crab cake. And they were usually pretty accommodating. So, so no, I don't have to cook separate meals. Renee Cohen, Koenig, I thought I heard a baby in the background. Was that your friend's foster baby? It was probably some friend's baby here. Um, I do work from home, so a lot of times I help people out and there are kids here. <laughs> um, trying to think when that was. It was recently um, that there was, I had a little visitor for the day and uh, he was very noisy when I was filming. Julie Mullalay, Mul, Mul, my, I really scribbled these, M-U-L-L-A-L-Y. How do you stay focused? Right now I feel out of control. Sometimes I feel out of control. Um, I've had days like that where if it's not nailed down, it's in my mouth. I just try to stop, think about what I'm doing, and remember my why. Wait a minute, if I don't get back in control, if I don't stay focused, that weight's gonna come back and it's gonna come back with a vengeance because man, it comes back so much faster than it goes off. And we've all been there and we know that. So I really just try to, to, to ask myself, wait a minute, why am I shoving all this food in my mouth? Well, what's going on here? Why am I doing this? Am I bored? Am I thirsty? Am I tired? Do I need to go to bed? Am I bored? Do I need to go pick up my book or do I need to, um, you know, do something other than sit and eat? So yeah, I do lose focus sometime, but luckily, I feel like at this point I have the tools to rein it back in. It took a while though, it really did. You just have to keep remembering your why. I like to do before and after pictures. They keep me motivated because I remember how unhappy I was and how I always tried to hide behind everybody in pictures and how I tried to wear clothes that you know didn't make me look like a linebacker. And um, in, when I show you that picture at the end, you'll know exactly what I mean when I say I look like a linebacker. Um, so that, that's how I stay focused. Ma Mara, Mara Bardelli wants to know what are my trigger foods? Um, M&Ms, specifically peanut M&Ms. Yeah, that's big. Peanut M&Ms and Nutella. And ice cream. They're my three. Um, ice cream I've really gotten under control and I guess I've really gotten them all. I, I don't bring peanut M&Ms into the house. I, I can't. I can't. Nutella we always have here because my son loves Nutella and peanut butter sandwiches. 
but I can, you know, I don't have to, I'm okay with that. I don't need that. Um, if I took one bite of the Nutella, I would eat the whole jar. So I know better than to take even a bite of it. Um, once in a while, if I know, if, if I'm, if I want Nutella really bad, I'll take a teaspoon of it and eat that. If I know I'm going out somewhere, <laughs> I'll eat it before, right before I go out and then I'm out and I don't have the whole jar anymore. And then by the time I get back home, I forget about it. Um, I've done that with a couple things. So that works for me. But yeah, they're my big three. Lainey's Life wants to know, how tall am I and how long did it take me to lose the weight? I kind of answered that. I'm 5'4". I started February 13th, 2018 and made goal 9'11", 2018. Oh, I'm sorry. And that was, I lost 56 pounds in, in that time. And since then I've lost 65. So I added on another 11 pounds. Susan in Southern California wants to know, after I reached goal, was it difficult to stop losing and make lifetime? What was the process like? Well, I didn't stop losing once I made goal because that wasn't my personal goal. And I'm not sure the WW International rule, but for WW Philadelphia, you can go below your goal. You just can't go below your range. Like my range is 117 to 146. There ain't no way I'm going down to 117. I mean, I can't even break, not that I'm trying because I'm not, I, I can't even, I couldn't even break one, you know, 129. Um, the lowest I've gotten is 132 and that's unmaintainable for me. Like I was right back up to like 133 and a half the next week because I could never maintain that low. Um, and, you know, I think I did stop losing because my body was very comfortable right around 134, 135 and it kind of cut me off. You know, I'll have a week where I will be so spot on and so on. Sorry, my phone rang. What I was saying was I will have a week where I will be so spot on and so perfect. Do everything I was doing when I was losing the weight. And I maintain or I'm down, you know, up, up 0.2 or down 0.2. So I think my body is just comfortable, if that makes any sense. Beth Powell wants to know, she's four weeks into maintenance and she's continuing to lose. Now she's more than two pounds below goal. Do I have any suggestions? She has already increased her fats. Um, if you are done losing and don't want to lose anymore, that is definitely the way to do it. Um, stop using reduced fat or fat-free items. Go for full fat items. Stop using, you know, the light cheese. Use full fat cheese. That's definitely a great way to do it. Um, I know, like, I can't physically eat more. So that's what I did to kind of maintain. Um, I went from using the reduced fat to treating myself to full fat cheese once in a while, or I'm trying to think what else, um, like cream cheese, using the full fat cream cheese instead of the, the light cream cheese, things like that. So that's definitely a good way to do it is, is definitely increase your fats and you know, your dairy, stop using fat-free Greek yogurt and use the 2% or something like that. That's definitely a good way to help you maintain. L. Bennett wants to know if I eat a later dinner before weigh-in. I don't eat dinner before weigh-in. I weigh in at six o'clock on Tuesday nights. I eat a regular breakfast and then I eat a light lunch and then I don't eat dinner until after my weigh-in. I save all my points for my dinner after my weigh-in because I, I mean, I would have to eat dinner at like 5.30 and go weigh in at six o'clock and that would all be sitting there. And yes, if I did it consistently every week, then it would be a true weight. But I know I wouldn't be able to do that consistently every week. Some weeks I'd eat, some weeks I wouldn't. So I just wait until I get home and then eat dinner. Jessica Tripp wants to know, what is my favorite, most helpful kitchen gadget and appliance? Definitely my kitchen scale. I weigh and measure everything, mostly weigh. I find it much more accurate and I find that I get more food if I weigh it. So I definitely, my kitchen scale is number one on my list. My favorite appliance would probably, like gadgety appliance would have to be my air fryer. Um, I love it for anything with the two ingredient dough, my bagels, my calzones, um, pretzel bites, anything like that. I love to put in the air fryer. I love to put my chicken in the air fryer, everything. So I think my air fryer is definitely my favorite. Danielle P wants to know, do I have a cheat or a no track days? No, I don't. Um, 
once in a while I'll have an indulgent meal, but I track it. I, I always track everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because just because I didn't track it doesn't mean it didn't happen. And if I didn't track, I would have no idea how much I truly am eating. Um, did you ever eat something and then go to track it and go, oh my gosh, I was going to count that as five points and it's really 18. And that's what I would be afraid of if I had a no track day. Um, if I go over my points, I go over my points. But I track it. And I also want to look, be able to look back and say, you know, I had a really rough week that week. What happened? And I can look back and go, oh yeah, that's right. That's what happened. So just because you don't track it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So what's the point of not tracking it? Just to make yourself feel better? Mm -mm. I, I don't do that. So that's just me. If you have no track days and cheat days and it's working for you, I think that's great. For me personally, it just wouldn't work. Durham girl 63 wants to know, oh, this, this is a multi-part question. What are my favorite budget meals? Omelets, eggs and omelets, definitely my favorite budget meal. What is your go-to when you have no time to prep? <laughs> Breakfast for dinner. Can you see a theme here? <laughs> what foods do you always have on hand? Definitely two ingredient dough bagels. I love them. I said that in the very beginning. That is one thing I always have on hand. I always have hard boiled eggs on hand. I always have Greek yogurt on hand. What else? If you watch my grocery hauls, you know I always have orange queso cheese in a jar because I love that stuff. Um, and fruit. I love fruit. So they are the things I always have on hand, but definitely the two ingredient dough bagels. And she wants to know what keeps me motivated. I don't ever want to go back. I don't want to weigh 198 pounds again. I don't want to look at a picture of myself and want to cry. I don't want to hide behind my kids in pictures. And I can't anymore because they're taller than me. When they were little, man, and they came right up to here, they could hide me perfectly. Now, I can't hide in back of them because they're taller than me. So I don't want to have to hide in pictures anymore because I'm unhappy with the way I look. I don't want to go back on my blood pressure medicine anymore. I'm off of it. And it's a wonderful feeling. It's wonderful. The thyroid medicine I'll have to take for the rest of my life. There's no, no getting around that. But that's it. That's it. So I, it's wonderful. And I don't ever want to have to take that medication again. So that's what keeps me motivated. Healthy being healthy and being happy in my skin, being comfortable in my skin. Helen Brady wants to know, how much did I lose to get the goal and how long did it take? I mentioned this, I lost 56 pounds to get to my Weight Watchers goal in from February to September. And then I lost another 10 in the next month to get to my personal goal. So 65, 64, 65 total. Trixie Joyful wants to know, <laughs> I always, Wonder what you do for work as it seems kind of stressful. Some days it's very stressful, other days it's the best job in the world. But like I said, um, it has to do with children. I'm a private contractor and for their safety and privacy, I really can't say exactly what I do. But yes, some days, today was stressful. Today was very stressful. But it's also, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love it and it's very rewarding and I do like it. Penny Johnson wants to know, what kind of exercise do you do and how long? We already talked about that. Um, I run four days a week and do HIIT training two days a week. And oh, I guess I didn't say how long. Um, if I'm running three miles, it takes me about 30 minutes. Um, and then I do, the days I do HIIT training, I do 30 minutes. And honestly, I kind of pick 30 minutes because that's what I need to do to close the ring on my Apple Watch, 30 minutes of exercise. That's kind of where it's stuck. Uh, and then I do my arm weights and all, so that's an extra, like, 10 minutes. So probably about, I would say between 40 and 50 minutes a day in the morning. Dawn E. Farmer's Wife 04 says, have you always been a runner? Um... No, I enjoyed it in high school. I played field hockey and softball in high school. And I, I was one of those crazy people that enjoyed when we had to run before practice. Um, but after high school, I never really did. And then I did pick it up again. Um, when did I? I did couch to 5K one time before and then stopped. And then 
started it again and started running again in February. And was Dish With D your inspiration for YouTube? Um, you know, I, I don't, we kind of talked, we were talking one day and she mentioned maybe starting a channel and how she wanted her channel to go. And I said, you know, I was thinking about it too, but I want to do something a little different. She wants to be motivational. She just wants to chat. She wants to vlog. I wanted to do the grocery hauls and the cook with me's and the what I eat in the days. So our channels are very different. We're very different. We have very different philosophies on a lot of things, but we respect each other completely. Um, we disagree respectfully. And you know what? We're really good friends. I mean, we started our Facebook group together. We're, we do a lot together. So um, I guess I guess in a way she was because, you know, when she started talking about it, I'm like, you know, I was thinking about it too. And I thought, hey, let's go for it. I never truly thought it would take off like this. And I love it. Brenda Wathers wants to know, what has been your favorite part of your Facebook group and your experience with social media? I love my Facebook group. I can't believe how quickly it's grown. We are over 22,000 members. Uh, my favorite part is just, it's so positive. And I have great admins who, if there's something that's not positive, they shut it down quick. They shut it down fast. So big shout out to my admins out there. You guys are the best. You work hard. Um, but I just love how everybody supports everybody else. And it's great. Um, my experience with social media has been interesting. Um, you know, in the beginning with my channel, when I would get a thumbs down, I would take it personally. Now it's like, whatever. You don't like what I have to say. Or it could just be a troll who, no matter what I say, is going to give me a thumbs down. You know what? I'm not everybody's cup of tea, and that's okay. That is okay. Um, so it's it's been good. It has been good. The, the comments and the emails I get truly touch my heart and mean so much to me. Kim Scrapper wants to know, if you were stranded on a desert island and could only eat one WWE-friendly meal, what would it be? Well, you know, after my other answers, you know what I'm going to answer. Breakfast. I love breakfast. So it would be two ingredient dough bagels and eggs and bacon. Mm, that's what it would be. I would eat that every day. Um, Billy Norris, whose actual name is Nina, where did the name of my channel come from? I don't know. Um, well, like the whole point it plate, Weight Watcher points, and I knew I wanted it to be a cooking channel, so it kind of just evolved from there. Terry Musser wants to know what I do for a living. We already discussed that. If I tell you, I'll have to kill you. Um, independent contractor, but for privacy and security reasons, I can't say my exact job. Let's get fit with Sandy, my girl Sandy. I love her to death. Make sure you check out her channel. How much weight did you lose and how long did it take you? 56 pounds to Weight Watchers goal from February to September, 65 pounds to personal goal, and that took till the end of October. Karen Bradford wants to know, when I reached Lifetime, did I set my app to maintenance or leave it at weight loss? I left it in weight loss. I'm still maintaining, not losing. So I am thinking that I'm just really, com my body's very comfortable right here. Linda Quintalani, Quintalani wants to know, how did you figure out your point number for maintenance? I didn't, I just keep it at 23, anywhere between 18 and 23 points a day. Some days more, some days less. That's what works, seems to work. Last page. Mimi G wants to know, what meal is the hardest to plan and keep pointed? Lunch. I'm not a big lunch girl. Um, I love breakfast, as you all know, and I love dinner because I love to cook and I love to create. <sighs> lunch, I don't get super, I think because I have such a great breakfast, I don't get super hungry at lunchtime and I don't get creative. Like I can't eat the same thing. I don't meal prep because I can't eat the same thing every day. Um, and sometimes my days get, like I might have like, oh, you know, I'm going to make shrimp stir fry for lunch. Well, my day will blow up around me because that can happen at any time. And I don't get a chance to do that. That's why I always try to keep shredded chicken and yogurt and eggs um, and Olay Extreme wraps and maybe some turkey lunch meat on hand. I can always throw something together with that. So lunch is definitely my biggest, biggest struggle. Not so hard to keep point it because I usually don't get enough points at lunch. And I, I struggle to get a few more points in towards the end of the day. And I'm not a big snacker. 
Um, but lunch is definitely my toughest meal. Lizzie loves puggies or puggles. What motivated you more than anything during the hardest part of your journey? And what was the hardest part? <sighs> Maintenance is the hardest part. I, I tell you, I, I lost quickly. I lost easily. Um, I, I know you don't want to hear that. I know. But it, it's just the reality for me. But maintenance has been hard. Um, I find myself not wanting to go back to my old ways because I don't want that. But, you know, like, oh, maybe I'll just have a little bit more at dinner. Or, you know, maybe I'll just have that bigger piece of chicken. That, that's that been the hardest struggle. I, I don't, and I stop myself and like, hey, what are you doing? You know, whatever you did to lose, you got to do to maintain. Remind yourself of that. Um, so maintenance has definitely been the hardest part because it's just a whole new mindset. When you're used to seeing that scale drop every week and, you know, you're losing, you're, you're motivated, you're losing, you're, you're, you're heading towards goal, and then all of a sudden you're there and you're not losing every week. And, yes, you celebrate the maintaining and you celebrate the, you know, you're only up point two because you know maybe you didn't go to the bathroom before you weighed in whatever but just not seeing those little scale victories every week was tough for me um and to keep me motivated was just uh, the fact that I was losing consistently and losing well and feeling so good feeling lighter and feeling lighter on my feet and you know like not not having my knees hurt, not having my back hurt and things like that. Just just how good I felt kept me motivated. Cause I'm thinking, wow, if I feel this good with 20 pounds off, how's it gonna feel with 30 or 40 or 50 pounds off? So that definitely kept me motivated. I couldn't wait to see that next step, that next step. And buying a whole new clothes, whole new wardrobe, that was kind of motivating too. And last but not least, Dorothy McBride wants to know, with all the weight you lost, do you have much sagging skin? Yes. I do have a lot of loose skin. Um, mostly in the stomach area. It's um, it's not pretty. Um, I do have some under my arms, but I am working on toning that up. These were really, really... But they're getting better. Um, I did not lose anything in my chest. I was very chesty. I was a 36 triple D when I started. Um, I did not lose a cup size until I was down all but five pounds to goal. I was down 60 pounds before I dropped a cup size. And now I think I've dropped another cup size. I have to go back for another fitting because there things are, are a little bit loose in there. But I definitely have like a lot of loose skin up here I don't know if you can see that like a lot of loose skin up here and like like you can see you can't really tell with clothes on but without clothes on definitely loose skin so there's definitely loose skin there um a little tmi for you but yeah there's loose skin and back here um like right right here which i keep calling back fat and my husband's like that's not fat it's loose skin there's like no fat in there so yes, um, there's loose skin. Would I ever think about having skin removal surgery? Probably not. It is not at 50. If I was 20 or 25 or 30, I would probably consider it. But honestly, not at 50. I, I, you know, I'm the only one that sees it. My husband's the only one that sees it and he's fine with it and I'm fine with it. And it is one of the most painful surgeries that you can have. I saw someone go through it and it's just not for me. If I was younger, I would probably really consider it, but not at this point in my life. You know, I'll do what I can do to tone. You know, they say drinking your water through your journey definitely helps. It, it, it helps, it helps, it helps. So we'll see. I mean, you know, we'll see how much I tone up, but you know what? That's what pants are for, and if you wear a nice form-fitting dress, that's what a little bit of Spanx is for. Hold you in a little bit. Um, you know, it's funny. I never wore Spanx when I was heavier, but I just bought a dress for a wedding and there is nothing but me fitting in that dress. It's very form-fitting. It's adorable. 
but I did go out and buy a little Spanx to just smooth things out a little bit with that dress. So it's funny how I never wore them when I was heavy, but now I'm wearing the Spanx because we got to hold that loose skin in somewhere. So anyway, that is it. That is all your questions. I am so sorry this is so long. And if you got to the end, yay. Um, I should have probably made it in two parts, but I just was afraid I wouldn't get back to it. So I will try to remember to, I don't even remember what I was gonna link. Oh, uh, my arm workouts I was gonna link below. And I was gonna put a, the picture that pushed me over the edge. Um, at the end of this video, I will do that. And then I'll put a before and after picture also at the end of the video. And that is it. I thank you once again so much, so much for subscribing to my channel, for commenting on my videos, for getting me to 2,500 subscribers in what? Four months. Um, it, it just blows my mind. And I cannot thank you enough. And if there's anything I can, please keep the questions coming, keep the comments coming. My email is in the description box. Email me with any concerns you have and I will try to help you. Um, let me know what kind of content you would like to see. Let me know if you're tired of seeing any of the content I do. Um, you know, I'm trying to keep it fresh and trying to keep it fun. Um, there was one other thing I was gonna say and now I forget what it was. Let me know something. Oh, if you're not a part of our Facebook group, Denise and I's Facebook group, phone rang again. The link is below in the description box. Um, click on that link and come over and join us in our Facebook group. It is a fantastic group. And that's it. That's all I have for you. Thank you for putting up with this crazy long video. And I will see you tomorrow for a grocery haul and meal plan. Take it easy and thank you again.